The chair now recognizes herself for her opening statement. In the Middle East, uh, many times, events in one country have a profound impact on other countries in the region. In 2009, President Obama failed to support the protests that had erupted throughout Iran, an opportunity that could have turned the tide in Iran and the entire landscape of the Middle East. In late December 2010, a Tunisian street vendor set himself on fire to protest abuse by State officials. This act ultimately sparked the Arab Spring, with similar large-scale protests uh, spreading to Egypt, Libya, Yemen, Bahrain, and Syria in early 2011. In Libya and Syria, both Gaddafi and Assad resisted any calls for democracy or reform and, in fact, responded to the protests with violence and bloodshed. However, the U.S. response in Syria and Libya were mar markedly different from each other. Whereas in Libya, the U.S. responded by cutting ties with Gaddafi, sanctioning members of his regime, and led the push for the U.N. to authorize military intervention in the conflict, that was not the case with Syria. Then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton called Assad, quote, a reformer, end quote. And uh, that was uh, rather ludicrous. The death toll is now over 220,000 in Syria. But if this guy is who we thought would be a reformer, uh, well, we did not uh, really assess that uh, situation correctly. The U.S. refused to take any action against Assad. And even after Assad call, uh, crossed President Obama's chemical weapons red line, and has done so repeatedly, the United States did not respond with military force in Syria like we had done in Libya. The decision to not act on the red line caused a large ripple effect throughout the Middle East and beyond as our adversaries saw that we don't have the courage of our convictions to act and our allies saw that we can't be trusted to act and questioned our resolve. Even in Libya, where we did initially act, the administration failed to ensure stability, and now Libya is fractured and has become a breeding ground for radicalism as extremists from Libya flock to join ISIL, al-Nusra, and other terror groups. This mirrors the consequences of the U.S. withdrawal from, of our troops from Iraq in 2011, leaving a void that Iran was more than happy to fill, allowing the regime to gain more and more influence over Baghdad and Maliki. So the United States' decision to not get involved in Syria immediately and to withdraw our troops from Iraq in 2011 played a large role in facilitating the rise of ISIL and its spread from Syria to Iraq. But I'm not part of what Jean Kirkpatrick called the Blame America First crowd. Uh, the responsibility is with ISIL and all of these terror groups and not of the United States. But the rise of ISIL has exacerbated the humanitarian crisis that we have seen in Iraq and Syria. Millions have left, hundreds of thousands have been murdered, religious minorities have been targeted for extinction, and nearly every country in the region has felt the impact of the terror of ISIL. The crisis in Iraq and Syria is a cancer and it is quickly metastasizing and spreading throughout the region. In Jordan, the kingdom is uh, fle feeling the burden to try and take care of the Syrian refugees and to protect its own borders. In Lebanon, there are over one million registered Syria refugees, and the fighting between Hezbollah and the Lebanese armed forces has caused instability in the Golan Heights, which poses a security threat to the democratic Jewish state of Israel. In Saudi Arabia, an attack against our embassy in Riyadh was foiled when nearly 100 individuals were arrested this week, all alleged affiliates of ISIL. This is why the administration needs a drastic reassessment of our policies. We've got an Iran that remains unchecked in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, and in Yemen. We have ISIL and Al-Qaeda resurgent. Assad remains in Syria and the sectarian conflict between Sunni and Shia are as bad now as any time in recent history. Many questions remain about the Syrian train and equip program, the size and the scope of the mission. The program isn't even up and running yet. By the time the program finishes, it could be too late and the situation in the region could be worse. 
Many issues remain regarding the proposed authorization for use of military force, the AUMF, that the administration has sent to Congress, not least of which is the failure to address Assad, al-Nusra, and other terror groups in Iraq and Syria. The administration has failed to develop a comprehensive strategy to address all of the threats in Iraq and Syria, but until we do, the situation is only going to get worse and we will be faced with even tougher decisions down the road. And to uh, recognize our, our members for any opening statements they would like to make, Ms. Frankel, my uh, Florida colleague. Well,